Let me make some announcements. Um, first of all, I want to remind you about the YouTube channel. We have uh, the, the Soma Church Tuscaloosa YouTube channel up and going, and there are a lot of great things posted there. Uh, Brittany's done a great job. I'm sure some of you parents have already seen it. She's put up some videos for the children's ministry. Pastor Corey uh, put up a video for the student ministry. Um, we are archiving our, our services now, so what we're doing tonight will be archived on YouTube. It will also be archived on Facebook after this, so it won't go away on Facebook. You can check it out later, or if you want to go back and review it, you can see it again later. Um, we, we also have um, all the information that you need for updates on our church app on the website. So we've just coupled the YouTube channel to be a part of that. So be sure you check that out. Um, this Sunday, as it stands right now, this Sunday we are going to be having a virtual service again. I think the, the recommendations from the leaders in, in the civil areas of our community are going to be the same. So we'll plan on that. Um, again, Matthew has worked super hard to bolster what we got going on, and um, he deserves those mad props. Um, so I think our, our service on Sunday is going to be really great. I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, as for tonight, we're still testing some things. We don't think there's going to be any issues, but we're here on the Soma Facebook page live. Uh, we'll also be on my personal Facebook page, like I'm looking over at it now. There's some people joining. By the way, if you're on my personal Facebook page and you want to join in on the Bible study, you can watch it here, but I'll be directing my attention to our Soma Church Facebook page. You're welcome to lurk, uh, search. Excuse me. I'm already getting tongue-tied. <laughs> You're welcome to search Soma Church and uh, go and check that out. We'll be having some interaction with our church and scriptures in just a little while. Come and join us there if you want. But in, in the interim, if there's an issue on the Soma Facebook page, I'll be jumping over to my personal uh, Facebook page, and we'll continue to be live there. A couple of other announcements before I turn it over to Karen. Don't forget about giving. Giving is so super important right now. Um, we're not seeing one another, um, you're not coming to the church, so you can give online. Uh, you're welcome to give uh, by mail. You can mail the check to uh, Soma Church, 212 44th Court Northeast. If you're interested in dropping by and uh, putting your tithe and offering here at the church, call the church office. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some instruction about how to do that. And you can always, always give online. I think I already said that. You can uh, go through our website. You can go through our church app and give. Um, please continue to support the church as much as you can while we're, while we're, in, this, when, while we're in this period. Um, also, um, I forgot about this. What was that? <laughs> we, before tonight, we posted the discussion questions on our Facebook page, okay? So Karen was great. She gave some um, wonderful discussion questions. I have them here. Uh, but I took this and we posted it onto the Facebook page for you to review. You may have already seen it, but if you have another device or you have a way to just go away from, from the Facebook Live and go to the Soma Church page, check, it, check that out. Uh, we're going to be referring to that some tonight, so you can, you can look at it and uh, interact with us. Um, so, without further ado, I think that's all the announcements. Can you think of anything? No, we just want to pray and get started. That sounds okay. good to me. Right. Karen, would you lead us in prayer, and then to. we'll get right on in. Father, I thank you so much that in this time where we're not able to gather together personally and, and as a group here at the church, Lord, or wherever we are, you may be gathering, Father, that we are able to come together virtually, Lord, this is a blessing. This is, uh, Sean and I talked, if it had been 10 years ago, yeah. this couldn't have happened. Father, we just thank you for this ability that you've given. We thank you for, for the expertise that Matthew's brought to this, Lord, just Amen. to be able to really make this happen, Lord. And, and Father, I just ask you, um, just even as, as we sort of navigate some really untested waters for, for how we're doing this, Lord, you just, you just open our hearts, you open our minds, to, to just hear your word by your spirit that we just receive from you tonight, Lord, what you would have us know, what you would teach us. And mm -hmm. I just thank you that, um, that you are faithful in so many ways, Lord. I just ask, Lord, if there's anybody dealing with fear, just yeah. the fear that's so pervasive right now in so many hearts because of the uncertainty of this virus and, and what that means for our future, Lord, I ask you to bring peace. 
I ask you that you just blanket our hearts and our minds with your peace and your presence. In yeah, Jesus' God. name, amen. 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 A couple of uh, other logistical things. We are going to read the scripture tonight from the New Living Translation. Karen suggested it because of the way it reads, and, and I think it's a great idea. So in just a moment, we want to do that. Um, take some time right now, if you will, to get get a Bible prepared, uh, get, get, get your scripture ready to read together. And we're going to dive off into this in a moment and read the entire chapter of chapter 8 together and then have the discussion like we normally have. Um, is there anything else that you want to cover? No, let's go ahead and read, and then I'll give a little bit of logistics on how we're going to discuss and, and, and address this. Okay. So, okay, sounds great. All right. What I'm going to do is because, you know, unfortunately there are a lot of uh, chapter breaks that, that seem to break up a, a thought that's being given in Scripture. We're going to jump back into Romans 7 just to pick up verse 21, and then we're going to roll straight into chapter 8 because... The, the chapter break breaks up the thought here. So, okay. okay. Hey, hey, let's yes. give everybody just a moment okay. to catch up with us and give just a few more seconds. If you want to get your Bible, if you want to uh, get, get things settled in your home, if, if you need to adjust because we're about to read the Word together, we'll give you a few seconds to do that. Um, so, so get your Bible, get everybody together. I know we just kind of bulldoze through a lot of information. We'll pause for a moment and let you let you get settled before we dive right in. I'll look at a couple of comments right okay. here until then. Um, Jay Collins says, if we listen really fast, can we catch up with y'all <laughs> as far as the delay <laughs> is concerned? I, I really wish that was possible, Flash. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Ken Worley said, this is a beautiful, or that is a beautiful lady on your, on Aww. your, on the streaming. <laughs> Ken. Hi, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> Mad props to Ken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I'll keep him. Yeah, you, know, you should. And on my Facebook page, uh, if you're on if you're on my personal Facebook page and you want to participate in the Bible study, we're over on Soma Church's Facebook page. We're live there. Check it out. We're about to read. Um, we're about to read the Bible, Romans chapter eight. We're studying Romans chapter eight, and we're about to dive right in. So I think that's a good delay. I hope you uh, you're ready to go. Karen, give us that preface again, and we'll go right into the okay. scripture. Okay, we're studying chapter 8 tonight, but because um, a lot of times the chapter breaks really interrupt a thought, we're going to back up into chapter 7 so that we really get the context of what happens at the first part of chapter 8. So we're going to go and start with Romans 7, uh, verse 21, and keep going. And again, we're reading from the NLT. It just uh, I usually study from the NIV or the New King James, but this was it just the way it the language was really good and understandable in the New Living Translation, the NLT. So I want us to read from that tonight. Okay, here we go. Chapter 7, verse 21. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that's at war within my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Now we go to chapter 8. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving Spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not. He sent His own Son in a body like the bodies that we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So, let your sinful, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. 
That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. Mm. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. Sean, you want to read? Sure. So dear Christian friends, you have no obligation whatsoever to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you keep on following, you will perish. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit you turn from it, and its evil deeds, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you should not be like cowering, fearful slaves. You should behave instead like God's very own children, adopted into his family, calling him Father, dear Father. For his Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we will share his treasures for everything God gives to his son Christ is ours too. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will deliver to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, everything on earth was subjected to God's curse. All creation anticipates that day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning and is in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And even we Christians, although we have, hope, have the Holy Spirit within us, are... Let me start over there with verse 23. And even we Christians, although we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, also groan to be released from the pain and suffering. We, too, wait anxiously for that day when God will give us our full rights as His children, including the new bodies He has promised us. Now that we are saved, we eagerly look toward, we look forward to its freedom. For if you already have something, you don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something, we don't yet have what we, we don't have yet, we must, my goodness, that all sounded good in my head, but it didn't come out right. <laughs> I'll start back with verse 25. But if we look forward to something we don't have yet, we must wait patiently and confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our distress, for we don't even know what we should pray for, nor how we should pray, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to become like His Son, so that His Son would be the firstborn with many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, He called them to come to Him, and He gave them right standing with Him. He promised them His glory. Okay. Want to go ahead? Sure. Verse 31, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Amen. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity, or are persecuted or hungry or destitute, or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, scriptures say, for your sake we're killed every day. We're being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. 
Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, mm. nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 All right, so we just read the chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, um, in preparation for a deeper dive and some discussion in the um, book. But I see on uh, the Soma Church Facebook page and I see on my personal Facebook page that some people have joined in. Uh, we are also live on the Soma Church Facebook page. If you want to jump over there, we're just running my personal Facebook page as a backup. You can uh, see what we're doing with graphics. We're on about a 20 second delay. So uh, this interaction and this study is going to be a little bit different for us at this point. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll dive right in in just a moment. Karen, did you want to say anything before we talk about these topics? I, just as we were reading the last part, I just love that scripture was written, this was written approximately 2,000 years ago, but it's still alive today Amen. because God's spirit makes it alive for us. Yeah. And it's still contemporary. Yeah, you good know, point. It's, it's not a, uh, some dusty book on a shelf that was valid then, but not now. Yeah. So. Amen. Amen. We, we have um, discussion questions that Karen so graciously put together. They are uh, posted on our Soma Church Facebook page. I posted those a little earlier. If you haven't gotten them and you want to go over there and get those real quick, you can go and, and view those um, or do a screenshot if you want to and uh, put the uh, Facebook live feed on the background and look at these. If, if not, you just want to follow right along with Karen and I. We're going to go through a couple of these uh, in a deeper study together with you, uh, with you here with us. And then we'll do some interaction in a moment on the Facebook live, the Soma Church Facebook live post. So uh, Karen, why don't you lead us into that? Okay. Um, as we've done, if you've been in some of our past studies, uh, we have often read part of, a pas part of the book, part of the passage, and just tried to identify some of the main ideas or the themes that were in that so we can really get a grasp, grasp on what the meaning of it is. So I thought it, I broke out several, five or six different uh, chunks of scripture throughout this that we can look at the uh, idea or, or the main idea or the theme for. And um, thought what we do, let me just kind of go over, we're not going to obviously be able to do everything on mm -hmm. this sheet tonight. Mm -hmm. So this is just, Sean and I will interact about a little bit of this, mm -hmm. several sections of it. But then just want to encourage you sometimes this week, maybe either by yourself, with your spouse, your family, uh, just Go through the rest of this. This is a really rich chapter. There's so much here for us. So you don't want to um, you don't want to miss that. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, these are just some ways you can look at the different sections, kind of identify for yourself the main theme. But then there's some deeper dive questions to to get you just to thinking a little more deeply about yeah. that section of scripture. And and you may have a lot of other things you take away from it besides what's been brought up in the questions too. So absolutely. Um, Thank you, Karen. Great job. Yeah. So let's just, uh, Sean, I'm just going to read again. We're going to start with Romans 8, 1 through 4, and okay. let you and I interact about that just for a little bit. Um, okay. And then um, Romans 8, 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who, are in, who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And that body God declared, and in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Amen. Okay. Sean, if, if you had to just give a sentence or two to sum that up, to kind of give the idea or the theme, what would you say? Well, I think there's a couple of things there. Most everybody grabs hold of that first verse. There's therefore now no condemnation mm -hmm. to those who are in Christ Jesus. Uh, because I think uh, for, for, for many of us, um, we, we, were, we were raised in a condemning culture as mm -hmm. far as the church is concerned. And to hear there's no condemnation on us anymore, or we don't have to live any guilt and shame in Christ, 
that the theme of grace and forgiveness is applied to us is a huge relief mm -hmm. of freedom that you know our past sins our past struggles we don't live under the condemnation of that of that anymore we're free from it and then i like also as a secondary theme um he 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 goes on a little bit more that he destroyed sin's control mm -hmm. over us by giving christ as a sacrifice so more than just having no condemnation there's no longer the sinful control of it. So we don't have to live under the con condemnation and guilt of sin, but we also don't have to continue in sin. We're free from the power of sin because of Christ. So I think those two things are, are super important mm -hmm. uh, themes to pull from that first verse, our first four verses. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to, to give a lot more detail about that in Romans chapter 8. And I want to turn the tables on you. So <laughs> maybe maybe you've got uh, a couple of themes there. And I'm putting you on the spot, yeah, I think. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you've got... It's not the first time. No, it's not, right? So maybe you've got a couple that, that jump out on you or one or uh, two. Let's see. And Let me I, just glance over this. might be the same one, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's really so much of the same, but I think just... He just makes, I don't how to put it into words, this may really even be more just a personal reaction to it. But, um, you know, it's easy, easy, even as a believer in Christ, to still feel shackled to the law. Like, yeah. I've got to keep the rules. I've got to do this, 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 and this to be good enough for God. Right, right. And, and really the emphasis here is you can't do that. Right. You never could do it. You never will be able to yeah. do it walk in the freedom that Christ has already bought for you. Absolutely. And and so that to me is the really exciting news right. of this four verses here. Right. And um, I think the more we meditate on that, and reading through Romans, Romans, he has spent the first seven chapters up to this point, basically with that same message. Right. You can't fulfill the law. The law brings death. We thought it was going to bring life. It can't bring life. The only way we're going to have life and right relationship with God is through putting our faith in Jesus Christ Amen. and His sacrifice. Amen. So. Amen. Cool. I think it's a good theme. Um, how, how, you want to go on to the next one? You want to you do another theme with the 5 through 14? Sure. Okay. Let's go for it. Why Let, not? Let's do this. Let's get some interaction. So here's what we want you to do. Again, we're about 20 seconds delay. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you've got a theme that you pull out there in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 4, uh, take a little time and type it out. I can see your... Uh, I can see your comments on the on our on our feed here. So Romans eight one through four. If you've got a theme that we didn't say and you want to type it in, type it in there. We'll come back and we'll we'll, we'll review that in just a moment. Karen and I, while you're doing that, um, we're gonna we're gonna go through chapter eight five through fourteen, and we want you to do the same thing. So in five through fourteen, if you're thinking of a question or you've got a comment about that, just type it in. And uh, we'll come back to those in just a moment and get a little interaction with you, okay? And just before we do that, if you're watching on my personal Facebook Live, uh, we are over on the Soma Church Facebook Live as well. Um, we're running my Facebook Live as just a secondary thing. You're welcome to join us over there. That's why it kind of looks funny. We're, you're looking at us from the <laughs> side because we're focusing on what's going on here. But um, you're welcome to join in there. Go search Soma Church. And you can join in there and interact if you want. Or you can actually, we'll come over here too. If you want to put a comment about the verses we're reading, you can do it right there on my personal Facebook page and we'll look at that. So comments, themes, themes about 1 through 4, verses 1 through 4. And then we're going to read 5 through 14. And um, you might want to talk about those or put a comment about those two themes that you see. So go ahead, Karen. Okay. For those who are dominated by the sinful nature, think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It, will never, it never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. Mm. That's the important distinction. Mm -hmm. And Christ lives within you so that even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. 
And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Amen. Mm. Amen. All right, so the themes there. Um, what Karen, what do you see? I'll just, we'll flip the script here. We'll go back and forth. Yeah, what do you see there that jumps I, out? I see a tug of war. Okay. The um, sinful nature, even for those of us who are in Christ, there's still this unrenewed part of us mm -hmm. that is warring, trying to pull us back into an unchristlike, into fleshly old nature. Mm -hmm. But this tells us His Spirit lives mm. within us. We are we are full of His Spirit, and because of that, we can walk pleasing to Amen. Him. Amen. Yeah, I was going to say something very similar. Um, it's encouraging to me that. There's no condemnation, yeah. right? We're free from the law of sin and death by, because of Christ's um, death, burial, and resurrection. And we don't have to continue in sin That's anymore. Right. That's right. You know, it, it's not, it's, there, we're, not, we're not bound by it. We don't, we're, we're not slaves to it any longer. That's a good way. We were enslaved to it. Right. Now it nips at our heels. Right. We're no longer enslaved by sin. Right. And so the encouraging thing for me is, even though I'm, I, I'm in that tug of war most of the time, where the Spirit of Christ is in me by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the, the, the willful, sinful flesh is still there, when I'm tempted, I, I, I'm encouraged because the power of the Holy Spirit is alive. Yes. And through Him, I have the power to overcome that sin. Yes. I don't have to war with it and push it down myself. I can surrender it and to Jesus, and he gives me the life of Christ himself by the Holy Spirit. And so I'm not, I'm not enslaved to it. And I like, I like to tell people that you don't have to sin. You, you, just, you just don't have to do it. You don't, it's not something that is, is powerful over you anymore in Christ. You can, you can walk away from it. You can be delivered from it in Christ. So yes. any other themes you see there? I was going to glance back. It seems like it was something else. If you guys want to add a comment or a theme in the comment section, you're welcome to. Yeah, Everybody's pretty free. quiet yeah. right now. Uh, we <laughs> want this we're to so entertaining. Oh, right? yeah. are we entertaining? <laughs> we're built for TV. <laughs> okay, no, we not. want to hear from you. <laughs> yes, we do. So what we're doing is we're just looking back over the verses, and we do this on Wednesday nights when we're here in the facility live. We're looking over the verses, chapter 8, verses 1 through 14, looking for themes that might be in those verses to share with one another. Carolyn and I shared some. We're interested in you sharing some. If you want to put some in the comment section of the Soma Church Facebook page, or if you're over on my personal Facebook page live, you can write some comments there. Um, if you want to jump over to the Soma Facebook page and you're on my personal one, you're welcome to. We're interacting there uh, with folks, but you can put some comments here. Chapter 8 of Romans is what we're studying. Very good scripture. Uh, we've gone 1 through 14 looking for themes. Okay, I think we've given everybody an opportunity to comment, and um, I don't see any comments, so I, I don't yeah. know what that means. Oh, we're good, right? I mean, we're, we're live. Everything's working fine. Okay. We're good. All right. Everybody's cool. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to type on here, I love you, because I'll show you. You can comment. <laughs> <laughs> we really would like to know, especially this last passage we just talked about, how does that impact you? Mm -hmm. How... how what does that mean to you as a follower of Christ? Amen. If you want to put that down, you can. The, what we're working off of is a sheet that I posted on Soma's Facebook page. Um, this has got um, all the information we're studying. You, you can go and look at it. It's a document posted there. We, we want you to take this Romans chapter 8 and study it further than what we're doing. We just did the first 14 verses, and we're going to jump down, down here for a deeper dive. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in that, you can check it out. It's on our Facebook page and uh, study a little bit more afterwards tonight. All right, Karen, let's jump down to the, the deeper dive okay. section there and just lead us in that, please. Okay. If you just go to the first one, that was our first section, uh, Romans 8, 1 through 4. 
It says, take a moment to really meditate on God's incredible gift of forgiveness and the freedom from the control of sin and death that we've received through our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and this is just an opportunity as you think about this, just to offer a prayer to the Lord Amen. of thanksgiving or whatever's on your heart. Or, or just even a praise. So if you want to respond with that in the comments or, um, you know, I just, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed at times. I was, I was just kind of meditating on this this morning myself. Mm -hmm. it, it just overwhelmed me that I could do nothing yeah. to be right with God. Amen. And so Jesus did it. Yeah. And, uh, he did it for each one of us. If it had only been one of us, I believe he would have done it if it had only been one. Amen. But he offers that free gift to everyone, and it is our choice to accept it or not. Mm -hmm. But the offer is there and, and the opportunity to, to belong to God and uh, through Jesus Christ. And so it's so humbling and so overwhelming because we don't deserve it. Amen. Don't Why don't you take it. some time and pray into that? Okay. Father, I just thank you mm -hmm. for the, the, just the unimaginable gift that you have given us in Jesus Christ, that we who, who cannot be good enough for you in ourselves, who have tried every which way before we come to you to, to make ourselves right and to make ourselves good and, and just keep bumping up against the fact that we cannot. Oh, Lord, I thank you so much that you, you have done out of your great bottomless love for us Mm -hmm. what we could never do for ourselves. And Father, let us not take that lightly. Let us run into your arms and, and just to receive all that you offer to us, the life of Christ in us. And Father, may we, may we truly give our lives to you because of that, Lord. Amen. Let, us not, let us not use you as a, a, I don't know, just something on the side, Lord. That's the only yeah. way I know to say it. Let us, let us have hearts that are so grateful and so devoted to you because of what you have done for us, Lord. And we just thank you again. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Looks like we got a, a comment there. Chuck says, it gives me hope and strength to know that whatever I'm going through, I'm not fighting alone. Mm -hmm. And that's very true, Chuck. Amen. You're not fighting alone at all. Not alone at all. All right, that Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 14, the deeper dive says, what truths from these verses really impact you and why? So if you'll take a moment and comment about that on, on the Facebook post there, what truths from these verses, Romans chapter 8, 5 through 14, what verses really impact you and why? All right, take a moment and look over those verses and um, put a comment there. John, is there anything you would like to, to mention that really impacts you from that while they're thinking of, you know, some thinking for themselves mm -hmm. and meditating on that and maybe re uh, responding? Hmm. I know we've talked about this a little bit, but is there anything you... Yeah, I, I like... I, I just... I want to reiterate... Um, the, the verse 5, the, verse, first, the first part there in verse 5, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that praise the, or please the Spirit. I, I experience that as I have matured on the journey that I'm on. Um, I'm finding myself less and less dominated by the sinful nature because I'm thinking less and less of sinful things. And it's not always necessarily a one for one, but as we grow in Christ, as we devote ourselves to Him and just yielding our lives to Him and allowing Him to change us, um, we, we can start seeing that our sinful nature is not dominating our thought mm -hmm. our patterns. Yeah. Okay, And a lot of people think that, okay, I've got to control my thoughts and that'll change my character. It doesn't happen that way. Your character is changed, your thoughts are changed because Christ becomes the dominant factor in you, and then He transforms us from, from the inside out. Um, so in, in my deeper dive, I think that verse is, is, is super, super important. Yeah. Is there anything for you? 
Um, just along the lines of what you were saying, I know we'll study this in a few chapters, but Romans 12, 1 and 2 is one of my favorite verses. Oh, yeah. be, tr be transformed by the renewing of your minds mm -hmm. that you may prove what is the good and acceptable will of God. Oh, yeah. And so it is in that transformation by His Spirit in our minds, but, it's, but we have to do our part in that also. You do have to think thoughts that are pleasing to Him. You have to know His Word, because yeah. if you don't know His Word, you don't know what pleases Him. Amen. And so that's why it's so important to stay in His Word, to keep learning, keep growing, just going back to it as our foundation and mm -hmm. our standard, and then filter everything else through that. Yeah, man, that's so super important. Cool, thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's see if we have some interaction here. I think we do. You can probably see that. Hey, Jay. Um, well, we had two. We had some from um, uh, Daniel Bubba Bonner, and he says, you've got a good corner man who's not going to throw in the towel because he knows you are better than whatever you are facing. He's going to coach you through it if you let him. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. It's pretty cool mm -hmm. stuff. And then Jay says, to his child and still living under condemnation, to be his child and to still be living under condemnation, how do we address that? Good question. Okay, Jay's asked that question. Let me read it again. Uh, to be his child and still living under condemnation, how do we address that? Um, well, I think you have to remember the scriptures by faith and what we read there in chapter 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you're, if you're still living in condemnation and you are truly in Christ Jesus, then there, there is a, there's a reason that that's happening. And most, most, most commonly that reason is a false accuser of the brethren mm -hmm. um, where you, you, you've got some situ situations in your soul, some things that are there that may just be causing some condemnation from the enemy to be over you. Um, sometimes there's just a faith practice of that. You want to yeah. say anything about that? I think what you said, sometimes we just have to say, God, what do you say about me? Oh, good point. Our, our brains will run off in crazy places. And like you said, the accuser of the brethren of Scripture says is the devil, the enemy. Mm -hmm. And he will bombard our minds mm -hmm. with thoughts meant to condemn us, railroad us, drag us back down. Mm -hmm. And so the one thing I have found personally um, mm -hmm is that I have to say, Lord, what do you say about me? Mm -hmm. I have to go to his word because sometimes our thoughts don't line up with his word. Absolutely. So if we go to his word and we say, even if I don't feel this way, mm -hmm. I'm going to, because I've already placed my faith in you, I'm going to take that same faith and I'm going to have faith in what you say. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to choose to believe that. Yeah. And and it is a it is a walk of faith, I think, to do that because... And and just to pursue through that because yeah. um, the devil's relentless a lot right. of times in accusing us and trying to pull us away from our walk with Christ. Right, and it, you have to understand too that our souls are memory oriented. Yes. All right. Not only is our mind a part of our soul level, but our emotions are um, our our emotions are part of that. Mm -hmm. Our our feels are a part of that. And because our soul is memory oriented, mm -hmm. a lot of times we 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 play back a lot of our yeah. feelings and our experiences and things, and that that's something that happens in our flesh. It's something that happens in our soul. God has released us from that. God has delivered us from that. God has freed us from that sin. That is no longer something that's a part of us, but the replay is inside yeah. of us, yeah. and we have to really allow. Well, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in the surrender of that to Jesus. Yeah. You know, like you say, to believe the things that Christ is saying over us mm -hmm. and not believe what the replay is telling us. Yeah. That's so super important. Mm -hmm. And and again, you, you there's a, there's a fine line there because sometimes you can you can start leaning into the flesh ability to stop that. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing we can do to stop that. Just like there's nothing we can do to stop the sinfulness in us. We have to have like you're saying the power of his word. We have to have the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to come alive in us and change that pattern inside mm -hmm. of us. So if, if we're still dealing with the condemnation, it's a yielding to Jesus, mm -hmm. even on a soul level, of just having him change that in us. And, and quite frankly, it may not completely be gone until we see him face to face. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of times layers. I know I've experienced this. He'll deal with me about something or mm -hmm. I'll yield something to him. 
and it may be several years later there's another layer that comes oh, yeah. off yeah. and so like you said we are being changed into his glory but yeah. it's going to be until we go be with him yeah and and i think that's what the scripture's saying too about a hope yes. i think we read it there we in did. chapter eight mm -hmm. there's a hope of this being over and even though there may be some suffering in the meantime mm -hmm. this is not the end yeah. you know it, um and so, so Jay, I would say that particularly to you, man. If if you're if if you're dealing with some of that, or there's somebody else who's dealing with the condemnation still being there, even though you're in Christ, um, continue to yield that to Jesus and allow Him to bring the hope of glory that this will be over in seasons. Trust Him with the Word. Trust Him with the Spirit. So it's good stuff. Uh, it just reminded me further down in chapter eight um, because this is a question I thought we could talk about a little bit more but yeah um, let me just jump down there uh, on your, if you've got your discussion sheet in front of you if not just you can listen it's Romans 8 18 through 25 you know this really talks about how uh, it talks about creation and our bodies um, and ourselves groaning because of all the just the the wreck that sin has made of this world oh yeah go ahead and um, let's see Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse, but with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. Mm. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have a, the Holy Spirit within us, as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. Mm. And we too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including new bodies he's promised us. I guess um, what good. that really made me see was we have a present salvation and redemption, yeah. but there is also a future hope Amen. of salvation. So it's not accomplished fully yet. Amen. We, we've gotten we've gotten it totally in one spiritually, but a lot of things are still being walked out. Yeah, it's like it's like receiving the fullness of it in a defiled package. It's like it, it you know it, it's like getting getting uh, this is this is not going to be a good example. It's like getting a a real good software upgrade, a very very good up to date processor, but not having software processor, but not having the the, the, the physical hardware elements mm -hmm. to see it worked out. Mm -hmm. And there's the battle and the corruption, there's the glitches, there's that kind of stuff that goes yeah. on, if I can put it in computer terms. But in that day when we see him face to face and we're in our new bodies, the brand new software, the powerful <laughs> software and the powerful physical uh, 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 attributes of the risen Christ will be one in us. Yeah. And that, that's a hopeful thing. Yes, Because yeah. this old soul I mean, it, it, it just gets totally weary and crazy and fleshly, mm -hmm. and, and I feel the pains. Yeah, yeah. I feel the pains in my emotions. I feel the pains in my mind. I feel the pains in walking in this clothing of sinfulness, um, and I, 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 like the rest of creation, eagerly await yes. and groan for that time when I'm delivered from this body of sin. Yeah. 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 You want to say anything else about that? Even though we have received total salvation, from Christ, mm -hmm. you're right. The, the, our physical bodies are still waiting for that ultimate yeah. new body that we'll receive. Absolutely. And so it's a, it's a present reality, but it's a future hope. Yeah, amen. So it's very, very good. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. So, thank thank you. you for or your question. Yeah. Is there anybody else um, that wants to have any comments or anything before we move on? Hmm. Can you at least give us a, a heart or a love or, yes, ma'am, Miss Denise, the struggle can certainly be real. I tell you what, if you're enjoying it and you're okay with, uh, with what we're doing so far, just punch that like button or that heart button and give, us a, up something. Yeah, give us a little feedback saying, hey, we're, we're doing pretty good. Uh, it looks like we still got a, quite a few people joining in with us, so that's okay. good. And I think we did have, just for a moment, uh, I think we did have a little glitch on the Soma Facebook side, but it, it seemed to be corrected pretty quickly. We still live, Matthew. Everything's still good. So that's good. All right. Good deal. Thank you for the love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Okay. So we're going to go right along here. Um, just to give you a little bit more information, the, the sheet we're working off of 
is again posted on the Soma Facebook page. Um, thank you for checking it out. Get it, uh, get it checked out. Boy, y'all are blowing it up. Uh, of course, we're in the delay, so I'm. Thank you, thank you for the feedback. Okay, cool. Great. Go ahead. I think we're going to wrap up with this tonight, mm -hmm. Sean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our world right now is in such turmoil. Mm -hmm. We've got a virus that's never been seen. It's shutting things down. It's, it's. You know, w there's so much uncertainty. We've just never been here, done this before. Absolutely. And so that then a lot of times leads to fear to doubt, to questioning, uh, anxiety, and a lot of people are dealing with that. But I want us to go to, to several verses here in the end of chapter eight, because I want us to think about how what we're gonna read relates to just the uncertainty and the upheaval that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna look at Romans 8, 28, which is a really familiar verse to, to many of us. And then we're gonna read 31 through 39. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and read that. And then I just want you to be thinking about what that what this passage means to you in light of just everything we're dealing with right mm -hmm. now. Okay, Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Now we'll skip down to 31. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can mm. ever be against us? Mm. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? Wow. No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we're killed every day. We're being slaughtered like sheep. Hmm. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced of this, that nothing can ever separate us from God's love neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today. Now, how pertinent is that? Yeah, no doubt. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So just want you to think on that scripture, filter everything that's going on right now mm -hmm. through this, through the love of God that nothing can come against. Amen. Nothing is greater than his love for us. Amen. Even when it's all fallen apart, mm -hmm. even when we can do nothing to change it, even when we're scared out of our minds. Yeah. I like the way that that says, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. You know, because uh, I think oftentimes uh, today we get we get we get to thinking that God loves us and is okay with us and is satisfied mm -hmm. with us. Um, his love is extended toward us in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, He loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him shall not perish or should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. That love does not ever cease from being extended to us, yes. and I'm so thankful for that. Mm -hmm. He's, he's extended that love for us in salvation. He's extended that love to us in hope for the, 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 the fulfillment of all creation being right with him. He's extended to that love in Christ to us, as you were saying just a moment ago, that with calamity and storm in Christ, God's love is never stopping to be, it's never stopped. It never stops, I should say it that way. It never stops being extended toward us. It is free and available to us in Christ Jesus, which is pretty doggone awesome. Mm -hmm. And we certainly need it these times, there's no doubt. We do, it's easy to look at the chaos and the turmoil around us and think, where is God? Yeah. But he assures us he is right there in the middle. Amen. He's right there in the middle. I, it's almost an aside, but I thought back to uh, Exodus. Mm -hmm where the, God's children, the Israelites, must have thought that he had totally forgotten them. Oh, good point. He was in the middle of his 
master plan to deliver them from slavery and bondage. Yeah. And it looked like he had totally rejected and wow. forgotten them. Wow. And so I think we have when we when we can look back at things historically mm-hmm. and, and in scripture and see that God is at work even when our circumstances may personally be falling apart or the world around us is in total chaos. He's not left us. He's mm-hmm. not abandoned us. And and he is at work to bring his purposes and plans about. Mm-hmm. And and like Romans 8, 28 says, all things do work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Yeah. And, and so we do have to at some point just decide to believe that no matter what it looks like. Amen. Good point. I think that's a good place for us to be tonight. You know, we just have to choose to believe that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a willful deal, but it's a it's a faith deal. Yeah. It's it's a surrender yield thing where, okay, I believe in the even though things are the way they are, Christ has extended his love, he is faithful, and he is good. Mm-hmm. And that's sometimes that's good enough. Yeah. That's good enough. Mm-hmm. And he might be in the middle of the plan, um, and we don't sense him. Um, what's that Waymaker song that yeah. sings? Even even when I don't see him, you, you're working. You're working. Yeah. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Yeah. You never stop. You never stop working. Yeah. God's 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 moving for Himself, yeah. for the glory of His kingdom, and for the benefit of us. Yeah. He is really doing it. Yeah. So, is there anything else you want to add? Just an encouragement. Stay in His words. Stay connected with each other. Let's. Let's just believe he is in control. Amen. Yeah.